OnePlus's new TVs are here and clearly the brand is trying to get into the flagship market just like it does with its smartphones. The TVs are filled to the brim with features and they go up against the likes of TVs from brands like Samsung, Sony and LG. If you want an affordable TV, I'd still suggest that you look at something like the Xiaomi View or you know the new Motorola TVs, but OnePlus TV is a flagship one. I'm sitting right next to the OnePlus TV Q1 Pro and this is the top end model out of the two models that have been launched. I'm a shot from Mr. Phone. Let's get down to our review of the newly launched OnePlus TV Q1 Pro. Here's the thing, whether you wall mount the TV or place it on a tabletop like we've done, the TV looks really good and blends into the aesthetic of your whole room. But the one thing that sets the OnePlus TV Q1 Pro apart from the other TVs in the same price range is that retractable soundbar. The soundbar that slides out of the TV looks absolutely cool and every single time I see it, I am, I am in awe of it. It is one feature that is full of pomp and show that you will love showing your friends when they at a house. The panel itself is extremely slim, so much so that I thought that it would break into two while installation. In fact, for installation, I'd suggest that you take the professional's help because it is not an easy process. You can either wall mount the TV or set it up on a dock like we've done, the dock that has the chrome finish that you see on the tabletop right now. Now that dock itself is only a single you know, dock that takes the weight of the entire TV from the center. Now it is sturdy by itself, but it cannot hold the entire weight of the TV and it wobbles at the slightest touch. This does not inspire any confidence in the TV not falling down at the slightest of touches. And you know what, I'd suggest that you actually wall mount it instead of setting up on a dock. P.S. I still can't wrap my head around the fact that you don't get the dock with the cheaper base variant of the Q1 Pro, which is the Q1 without the Pro moniker. I mean, I just find that really, really surprising. Anyway, the dock itself has a chrome finish that has this sort of old school look to it. I mean, it takes away from the entire modern aesthetic of the TV otherwise, but I don't have a problem with it. Your mileage could vary. Having said that, the headliner for the entire TV is that massive front panel with a 95.7% screen to body ratio, which is just crazy. The bezels are extremely slim and it looks really, really attractive in my opinion. And it feels like the TV is actually floating in the air when you've placed it on a dock. On the rear, you get this Kevlar back finish and a compartment that hides all your wires. That looks pretty cool in my opinion and that's a very well thought out design language if you ask me. So inside that compartment where you have your ports, there are four HDMI 2 ports with EARC support which is enhanced audio return channel. Audio nerds will know that the enhanced audio return channel will actually support 24-bit 192kHz bitstream of audio, which means that this is excellent if you have a home theater system set up to your TV with an amp and a receiver and, and you know the works. So essentially since the TV also supports Dolby Atmos, that is definitely going to be really helpful because you know through that HDMI channel you can stream your you know Dolby Atmos sound. So the HDMI spec also supports CEC which is consumer electronics control. What that means is that your remote, your OnePlus TV remote can also work with other devices and to control other devices. What this means is that I actually tried this with my Apple TV and it works absolutely fine. It's a bit of an irony because the OnePlus TV remote looks a lot like the Apple TV remote. So apart from the HDMI ports themselves, you get all the other ports and the OnePlus TV is pretty loaded in that respect. You get your AV input with the cable bundled with the TV and apart from that you get three USB ports, a USB 3.0 port, a USB 2.0 port and a USB Type-C port and then you get your Toslink port plus finally you get your RF connection port. So therefore it's pretty loaded. So the Q1 and the Q1 Pro both come with a 4K 55 inch HDR panel with support for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG and Dolby Vision. The support for Dolby Vision is especially great primarily because OnePlus has to pay a licensing fee to have that support so that's really good. 
Having said that, the content out there is pretty sparse. Firstly, the TV at the moment doesn't support Netflix, so the only show that I managed to find in Dolby Vision is Jack Ryan on Amazon Prime. If you guys know any more, do let me know in the comment section below. That's it. The panel is of a great quality, and if you're coming from an LED panel, a QLED panel on like the one on the OnePlus TV is going to feel like a massive, massive upgrade. Now, a QLED panel is. A quantum dot light emitting diode panel, and the quality of such a panel actually lies somewhere between an LED and an OLED panel. Let me explain the difference by first talking about an LED panel like one you have on a regular Mi TV. In an LED panel, there are two layers. There is the LED backlight itself and the LCD. So basically, the image goes through the backlight and then to the LED. In a quantum dot. LED you have the layer of quantum dots in between what this does is that it improves the black levels and it becomes deeper and the colors therefore become punchier as well now when you look at a me tv panel you will notice that the blacks don't look extremely dark black they look a little grayish but on a qled panel they look extremely black now this panel on the OnePlus TV is a VA panel of course the QLED panels mostly are VA panels and therefore the uh, viewing angles are not that great so therefore if you sit at an angle you will not see those deep plaques you will have to sit head on to see the deep plaques now if you've seen the long night episode in game of thrones season 8 episode 3 uh, you know you will know that there was a big hue and cry about the fact that people could not see the fight sequences clearly because it was too dark well that was a problem faced by people who actually use an led panel and not somebody who use the qled or an oled panel because the blacks are definitely deeper now when i saw the same episode on this panel it definitely looked way better and completely enhanced the experience from the first time that i saw on the me tv 4x pro for 55 inch tv so you know the oneplus tv definitely enhances that experience and if you are planning on buying the oneplus tv just go to a store and check out a qled samsung panel you will understand those are very similar now when compared directly to a samsung panel the samsung panel might be slightly better primarily because it has legacy and experience of creating these displays and of course it also sells to the other uh, you know tv suppliers as well and it definitely does have an edge over the oneplus tv but it is almost as close as the quality of a samsung qled panel you know what the colors just popped on the oneplus tv in standard mode and the gamma color magic engine just pushes the limits of the ntsc 120% and dcip3 96% color gamut now you know what unfortunately i don't have a colorimeter at hand to check the color accuracy of the panel but i'm pretty sure that you know you can adjust it using the right tools Having said that, you know, with my naked eyes, I couldn't see any color smearing. The colors were absolutely beautiful and punchy and vivid, and absolutely great. This was definitely a step up for me, who was using an LED TV before. So, you know, this is something that you want to aspire to. Now, if you want to see the close to natural look of how the you know creators intended for you to see their movies or TV shows, I would suggest that you put it in the cinema home setting, and that would be the best, most properly saturated level of how you should be watching this tv the tv also has a lot of other picture settings including one that is called ultra smooth motion in the advanced setting option there are a lot of other settings but in particular this one is something i absolutely abhor basically what this does is it actually enhances the frame rate of your picture and you know up to like crazy frame rates to a level of 480 fps so that makes it look like you know the picture has a smooth motion but that is something that looks extremely bad when you're watching regular movies or regular tv it looks great with sports but not with regular tv content and that completely gives it a soap opera effect which i completely hate and so does tom cruise anyway for upscale 1080p content i tried on my ps4 and the apple tv and it worked really well no problem at all the upscaling is really good though there is a little bit of pixelation that you see but it's not too much that will affect you at a certain distance Having said that I haven't had a chance to test out SD content but I'm guessing it will be really bad on a 4K panel for sure. Overall with the panel itself I really like what OnePlus has done with the OnePlus TV Q1 Pro and it is one of the A grade panels out there almost up there with the likes of Samsung, Sony and LG. The one biggest grouse that I have with most modern TVs is the sound quality and OnePlus fixes that with the slide out sound bar which is a 50 watt sound bar which slides out from the rear panel now this has eight drivers inside in a 2.1 channel setup 
uh, it is of great quality i mean it completely upgrades your regular tv's quality so it sounds excellent uh, in that regard i mean you don't get any sort of spatial audio despite the dolby atmos support and even in surround sound i mean it's not very spatial you cannot in fact i couldn't even tell the difference between the left and the right channels having said that it is crystal clear and you know audio sounds very good i liked the clarity option in the sound settings more than the other options so i suggest that you try that out as well also the audio is mostly distortion free up to like 80% of the volume level and that is more than enough for most modern houses having said that i don't understand the 30k premium that oneplus wants you to pay just for that slide out soundbar i think that for 30k you can get a very good 5.1 channel system or a pair of bookshelf speakers which should serve your purpose uh, you know because the sound is especially the bass while it sounds good enough it's not as refined and it's not as thumping as you would want when you're watching an action movie or something like that i would suggest that you pick up the base q1 tv instead of the pro and then you know invest in a sound system of your own because honestly the slide out speaker is just a novelty and after a while you'll forget about it so i think that you should pick up a speaker system of your own and the base q1 tv only so i got to say this the oneplus tv remote looks a lot like the apple tv remote but it is minimalistic and it's a very modern design you can charge it using your type c cable that makes it extremely slim but you are going to lose this within the crevices of your sofa so that's an issue uh, there's the prime uh, you know integration directly in the remote itself and there is the oneplus button that doubles up as the you know power switch of a restart button uh and sleep button as well so sleep is really good primarily because android tvs take eons to start so i think that putting it to sleep is definitely a good option that oneplus has given uh on this tv and the remote as well but one of my issues is that it doesn't have a mute button and the volume rocker on the side is a little bit of a, an issue for me i mean it it is a good smartphone based idea but it's too slim for me to actually uh, you know feel the tactile feedback the oneplus tv remote is definitely a modern design but i would have definitely preferred a slightly better button layout and still more thickness if if you ask me the oneplus tv q1 pro runs on android 9 pi with a short 3 years of software update which is great now the only addition to that core software is the oneplus play app which is essentially a patch wall rip off This is a uh, an aggregation of TV shows and movies from OnePlus's content partners which includes Hangama Z5 and Eros. Now that is definitely threadbare considering the 18 partners that Patchwall comes with and of course Patchwall is a more refined system considering it has existed for longer. So OnePlus still has a long way to go with Oxygen Play itself. Now core Android if you ask me that is of course a string of icons which are basically uh, a listing of apps and uh, you know the videos from youtube and a few other google play suggestions google play music google play movie suggestions it is okay i mean it's it's nothing to great i think that it definitely requires some more refinement now as for the apps themselves you get a few core apps like uh, you know file browser but you also get Amazon Prime which is pre-installed however Netflix is not pre-installed so you know Netflix support is not available right now but OnePlus has promised that Netflix support is definitely coming soon to the OnePlus TV so you know what we have to trust OnePlus on that right now so as software wise the Q1 Pro has Android TV but not any extraordinary feature that is worth highlighting one of the coolest feature additions to the tv is that if you are connected to the phone using the oneplus connect app on your phone which works on any android phone uh, when you get a call the tv automatically reduces the volume that i felt was an ingenious uh, you know implementation and it works really well Now OnePlus Connect app itself has a lot of other features like for example you can take a screenshot of your screen but you cannot take a screenshot within an app like Prime because it is DRM supported and you can also control the TV's software using the touch screen itself apart from that you can also play local files from your phone directly onto the TV so that shouldn't be a problem either so the OnePlus Connect app is done really well otherwise the OnePlus Connect app's main screen is basically a collection of the OnePlus Play content which i found was a little weird but otherwise uh, the remote 
uh, the fact that you can take a screenshot and the fact that you can play your local files all of that is great on the oneplus connect app well it doesn't really matter the oneplus tv feels really smooth primarily because you've got a quad core mediatek chipset inside which has four cortex a53 cores clocked at 1.5 gigahertz each and there is a 3 gb of ram and a little over 8 gb of storage as well for your apps. 8 gb of internal storage now might not suffice if you're going to be installing a lot of heavy graphic games like asphalt 8 now anyway to play a game like asphalt 8 you still need a gamepad to connect it to the tv using bluetooth by the way you can also sideload apps of course but you cannot sideload netflix which i tried but you can also actually connect your hard disk so that is absolutely great a lot of tvs don't allow for that and the network connection on the oneplus tv is actually excellent on my 300 mbps airtel connection i get 125 mbps on wi-fi generally that is the max theoretical limit that i can achieve anyway so that's what i get and on the tv i could achieve that as well so that's absolutely excellent and such speeds can actually allow you to stream up to 8k video content which is not necessary for a 4k tv but you can stream 4k with is no problem if you have a high-end internet connection but if you have something around 5 or 10 mbps streaming at 4k would be a bit of an issue so should you buy the oneplus tv q1 pro the answer to that question is actually no you know why you shouldn't buy the oneplus tv q1 pro because you should buy the base variant of the oneplus tv q1 pro which is the oneplus tv q1 which is much cheaper despite the fact that you don't get the dock which i still can't wrap my head around because you can buy the oneplus tv q1 you get the same picture quality which is what you're buying such a tv for that excellent qled panel and you can buy uh, instead of the sound bar you can buy a speaker system of your choice which is great right you need freedom why do you want to be tied in so get a 5.1 home theater system from sony you know that just costs around 20 grand so that would solve a lot of your problems for sure so I would suggest that don't buy the Q1 Pro, buy the Q1 and buy a separate set of speakers unless you're really enamored by that soundbar. Now, one of the things that happened after the OnePlus TV Q1 Pro was launched, Samsung immediately dropped the price on one of its QLED TVs to under a lakh, around 85,000 actually, and a lot of people ended up buying it, which is the Samsung Frame TV. And that panel is incredible, plus, of course, you don't get Android TV, but there is a lot of other smart features that you get with it and AirPlay support as well. Plus, Netflix is already preloaded. So that seems like a really good option as well. So maybe if you're buying the OnePlus TV Q1 Pro, take a look at the Samsung Frame TV just in case you might be intrigued by what's on offer. So overall, it is a definitely valiant attempt by OnePlus to get into a category that it hasn't tried at all before. It's a TV category, there are entrenched players, it's not a fast moving product category. So that is something that I find that OnePlus has actually taken a risk out here. And what needs to be seen right now is if OnePlus's loyal fans who bought OnePlus smartphones will actually buy OnePlus TV as well. because. Most importantly, at this moment, OnePlus needs the support of its OnePlus fans than anyone else. So will you guys buy a OnePlus TV? Do let me know in the comment section. So see you in the next video. I'm Ishar from Mr. Phone. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.